Yeah. Coffee machine. Right, just got to Paul's house. And I'm gonna go in his garage. Puzzle. Puzzle rocket. See any reason I'm mates with him because he's got a good garage. I think I'll look at me swing speed. Just hit him in the face with the tee. <laughs> ah! Cheers! The game now is about hitting it miles and I need to hit it further. Huh? Ah, yeah. Right, I want to get faster with the driver. Okay, why? I feel like I ate it straight now, mm. quite straight, good off the tee. Yeah. I'm not like like I used to be. Mm. Straight, but I don't hit it far enough. To get it within that 150 zone where you can get it close. Once you get outside of, I think 160, I think the numbers where it, it kind of, out the fairway anyway, where it changes from probability of making birdie to bogey. I think it's around at 160, so if you can get it inside 160 off the tip, you know, some of these par fours now 500 yards, you've got to start hitting it 300 yards plus. You've got to carry it 300 yards, a lot of traps. Where do you around. carry it? If there's someone at 300 and it's warm and I'm feeling good, I, me and Jamie would kind of say, yeah, we'll take that on. On days I'm swinging it, you know, I'm managing that. I'm not saying it's lashing away at it, I'm kind of seeing how I'm playing on a day. But yeah, if I'm swinging it nice and if someone at 300, then yeah, I probably, I, I would take that on, yeah. I would, if it was a trap or. I, I, 300 I, yards in the air. <laughs> that's, that's based on, you know, you've, you've got it, you know, you manage the course well, don't you? Some, again, you, you're not just hitting it for the sake of it. You're not, if you're not 100% confident you're gonna carry it over a water hazard or a bunker that's instant bogey. Sometimes it's the safer shot in it. Some people will say like, oh, you hit, hit and drive, it's the aggressive play, but sometimes you'll have, say for instance, water up the right and it cuts back at 285. Yeah. So you're hitting either iron into a narrow gap or you're hitting drive it over it all and it opens it up. Yeah, 100%. So people are going, oh, well, that's an aggressive well, you, play. Well, so you, that's actually a safe play. You're actually it? looking for wide areas. So that's why I want to hit it further so I can not hit it in the water. Okay. Because I'll that's be full iron in the water just as like the designer <laughs> driver, so I might as well hit them and carry it at 285, I'm safe. The other side, you can get a wedge in your hand, like how much you've improved your pitching over the years. You know, you're going to give yourself that's more awesome. and more <laughs> opportunities. Cameron Champ's in the press a lot at the moment, yeah. isn't he? You know, that's what I want to be like, I want to be like Cameron Champ. Don't we all? But, you know, this guy's swinging at 130 mile an hour. He got, I think, young, is it Matt Wolf, the amateur swing yeah. at 134 or Unbelievable. something. Unbelievable. But these guys are hitting 80, 85% of fairways Swings as well. Swings it mad. When you look at the lads that hit it miles, mm. you look at that. Matt Wolf, mm. Cameron Champ, uh, Ryan Fox, mm. the swings are mad. Like our generation of like, well, obviously Tiger Woods, but just before that, like Nick Faldo is like absolute textbook. I don't yeah. think you could do that now. I don't. I don't think you can. I think. I think, for me personally, I think a lot of the skills come out of the game in that respect. I, I do. I, I. I do. But you know, you do look at how skillful these guys are now with wedges. Mm -hmm. You know, how skillful they are actually to square up, driver at some of the speeds of swinging it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Mate, Matt Wolf and uh, Cameron Champ are swinging at this speed, but it's like eighty-five percent of fairways. Yeah, that, that stat alone leads yeah. driving accuracy, never mind distance. What do you swing it at? Um, oh, in tournament? Tournament's different, isn't it, than out playing yeah, practice? Yeah, I thought, mate, if I went in, if a, what, Tuesday and Wednesday, for some unknown, well, it's not an unknown reason, but without a bit of adrenaline through me, I don't swing it as fast. I can swing it at 120. 120 That's what you're expecting one, to swing it at? Yeah, tournament, tournament conditions, warm, I'll swing it at 120. And are you trying to find more speed? I'd like a couple more mile an hour, yeah. So you're swinging it at 120 and you want a couple more? Well, it's why we, we train, it's why we get in the gym, it's why we do all these things. It's I swing it up. I reckon, if I go after one, I, I probably do swing it fast in a tournament, but I reckon normal, like if I'm hitting a you know, standard driver, I'm hitting it 110, 111. If I go after one, maybe 114-ish. Yeah, I'd, 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 you know, I'd be surprised. I think warm, I think you'd swing it more 16, 17. No, playing with you as much as I play with you. Yeah. Not in that way. Uh, <laughs> I think, golf. I, no I think one uh, plays with me in that way. <laughs> <laughs> the days mean you go play nine holes where it's you know you, you you're not that far behind us you know it's not it's not like you 
mm. way back yonder. All it means is though that then you're going in with A sign where I'm going in with wedge. And that thing if you've got a trap at two seventy five, I'm pitching it in it and you're not looking at it. Yeah. I, when I played at Q School a couple of weeks ago and there's a lad, Kurt Kitty Armour, mm. who's just got his tour card, he finished, finished second or third, second didn't he? Third, yeah, at Q School. There's a trap on mm. ten. It's about 285-ish to clear it, it's par five. Yeah. So if you clear that, you've got, you're inside 200 yards into a par five. But if you can't clear it, basically you've got to go short of it. So I've got 240 in, he's got under 200, because he's nailed it straight over the top. That's side, if you're laying up with that right. trap, you're laying up at the front edge of it, where if he's carrying the back edge of it and getting some run, yeah, it is yeah. 50, 60 yeah, yeah. yards of difference. Yeah. Even though it's like, you can only carry it 10 yards further yeah, in the that's air. What I mean. The actual such consequence. A, such a difference, yeah. But the consequence of that 10 yards is actually massive. Yeah. Because you're not, again, you're not going to lay it up to the front edge of that trap. You're going to make sure you lay it up. Mm. You're going to lay it up 10 yards behind that. Yeah. So even if the trap's at 285, 275, 270 to the front of it, you're going to lay it up to 260. Yeah. All of a sudden, if he's at it, 285 in the air, got to hop off the back of the trap. He's 320 down there or something. But stupid. having said that, I hate it. Obviously, is it shorter than that Kirk Kitty armor? Mm. But him hitting it that far, it's not saying he's going to score well. Oh, he shot 24 under par. Oh, there's a bit of a correlation here between hitting it miles and being good with the wedges and scoring well. It is. Hmm. Yeah. I've been fortunate to be on tour for a, a long time. and I I remember when I first came out, I think the first year out there I averaged it 300 yards. And I think I was within the top 10 driving length. Yeah. This year I've averaged 304, so I've got longer. But I think I'm down in like 27th, 28th oh, yeah. in, in driving length. And don't get me wrong, I'm 30, you know, that was when I was 22 when I got out on tour, I'm 33 now. Um, no, you know golf, what I mean? golf's not like running, if, you, if you're fast, you're fast. And mm-hmm. golf, obviously there is that element of like being, having the speed, natural mm-hmm. speed, and there's a certain swing mm-hmm. speed, like Soren Kelton's never going to be able to swing it at 125 mile an hour. Well, no, well. Probably not. Probably not. I don't know, maybe you can, sorry. Sorry, maybe you can. You know what I mean? It's you not like, if you can run, you can run, and if you can't, yeah. You're not going to gain that speed. No. You can actually, but I hope you can build speed. Anyway. Yeah, well, I, I think, uh, you know, there's, you know, you look at certain techniques and certain coaching now, and I think people understand it more as well with, you know, some of these pressure monitors on the floor, some of the gym work everyone's doing these days. Like, so what, what, what's your plan then? What are you going to do to achieve that? Just well it. <laughs> so just stand there and just literally yeah. jump all over it. Yeah, that seems no, like no I'm going to train. I've got super speed training system. I'm going to use that and nice. see, like, because from what I've heard, the results with that are good. I go to the gym all the time, but obviously, it needs to be more speed based in terms of training. Like, I lift weights, but not much of it. Little bits, but not that much of it is like explosive speed training. Yeah, okay. So we need to do more Plyometrics, of that. Plyometrics. Yeah, of yeah. Stuff. You know, just simple things: box jumps, all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. Because that's big talk like that. Power will come from the floor, isn't it? Yeah. Improving technique. Yeah. It works. I'm coached at improving technique because I always get narrow on the way down. I have to back up and I think I lose speed because of that. Well, the moment you're backing off it, yeah, you will lose speed if you can keep going the other yeah, way. If you, yeah, your energy going towards the golf ball, and I think that's going to help. Again, like you said there, though, narrow. I don't think narrow is necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, Ryan you, Fox is yeah, you know, really, get, yeah, and he smokes it. You know, you look at Cameron Champ, how his right elbow works. You know, that gets on his side. He creates so much lag. Sergio. Yeah, so, you know, and you look at these guys. I don't, I think the key is being wide at the top, then creating a bit of, you know, getting it narrow and then being wide at the bottom. Obviously yeah. exploding out of it, I think. Yeah. You've got eight weeks off, so you're going to see it. To be fair, I'm going to be doing a little bit of that myself. Hit the gym hard, get a bit stronger, a bit faster. Yes! These young lads are coming out all the time, getting quicker and faster, and you know, if you don't improve with them, then you know, you're gonna get left behind. So that's what we're doing. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Alex Evans, five foot nine, world long drive champion. I'm gonna go hit some balls and show you how. Are you five foot nine? Five foot nine and a half. Certain heels. And a half. And even a weekend. Put a bit more gel on top of your head, it'll make it look a bit taller. <laughs> 170 ball speed though, I'll say that. Just dropped his iPad, don't tell him. Oh no, what's happened? Uh, oh no.